podcast shoot with laser beam. Hi guys, today we have Lucas from Laser Beam, amazing band from Bay Area, and I'm so excited. I'm Lucas. I was born here in San Jose, and um, I left, and now I'm back with a vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go? So I moved to Albuquerque when I was a teenager. I was very involved in all the shenanigans that Breaking Bad was all about. Oh yeah, I was like, is this the same place where that TV show was from? Yes, absolutely. Walter White was my teacher. He taught me a lot of things. And then I left when I was 18 to Arizona, lived in Jerome. Just basically spent my days washing dishes, going out back and trying to write new, new songs. And I lived in, uh, lived in my shuttle bus. I had like a little short bus, which was cool. Is, is this like an RV or it's like... A... Kind of, yeah. You had a little kitchen there? We, we have bought this old airport bus, like a short bus from um, the airport or something. It was really like old and dilapidated and cheap, you know? And then one day, as I, I used to live illegally in um, this town hall, like town hall, like underneath there's like- Is it like... the Statue of Limitation uh, <laughs> Hall? Can you talk about illegal stuff you've done in the past? I don't know, but don't let me go. So, uh, we will not tell. I don't want to tell a quick story, but that's okay. <laughs> like I used to live in the town hall underneath there's like, there's a few art studios you're not allowed like technically at night, but um, in my, my coworker, his wife was like the town treasurer or something. So oh, okay. she That's was, good. yeah, she was like, she worked in there or something. And then someone had caught wind and they were basically, um, they were planning on like getting me in trouble for living in there. So one day I come into work and my coworkers really, he's furious at me and he's like giving me the cold shoulder. And I'm like, Dude, I'm like, like, what's wrong with you today, you know? And he's like, and then he got all dad on me, like angry dad, you know? He's like, do you know what you've done? Oh, my God. <laughs> I guess it's like a, a legal or whatever to do that. So, so you moved from there to your yeah. minibus? Yeah, so that's when I was like, all right, let's build this thing. So it, it was awesome, like like an old pirate ship on the inside. Oh, my God. I, I like <laughs> ship lap up and it's all like brown, dark brown and um, cedar planks and stuff. I have a few questions about your band. First time I've seen Laser Beam was at Baltic Kiss. So I was like, this is awesome. Because Bay Area music scene is like not very rock music oriented. It's very blended and generous and not very well defined. And I was like, I really crave some heavy sound. I want to go and have them. And then I saw you guys at the stage you are great you're wearing this big um hat like a cup cowboy yeah. hat it was so cool and shout out to baltic is for a great um light work like stage light is so cool so tell us a little bit about uh, your artist name like how did you come out with this name i think everybody hates their own band name if they create a band name <laughs> Yes. So, and we all wish that we could change it, like, <laughs> probably every year or two. I wanted to call the band Raygun. Like, there's already another band called Raygun. I mean, it's uh, so hard to find. Well, I guess Raygun shoot laser beams, so. Mm. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, like, easy to remember. And it's kind of a funny name for, like, a rock band, you know? No, it, it, it's cool, and it's really memorable. I just like, got stuck in my brain, and I was like, Laser Beam, Laser Beam. I was like, I'm going to see this band, Laser Beam. <laughs> Can you narrow down your music to, like, particular genre, like, or niche? Like, what, what genre is this? I call it Doom Pop. I doom always pop. call it Doom Pop. Like, like with, with the genre for Doom, there's a big focus on like the textures and the tones and the atmosphere and the, the size and of like the music. Sprinkle of sadness. Yeah, sprinkle <laughs> of sadness. I would say maybe with Doom it's more like anger, but um, that's where my music is not quite Doom. So I, I like, yeah, I write more sad songs for some reason. They just resonate with me more, I guess. I love anger. Like, I mean, uh, I, I, I listen, I'm a very friendly person, but like there's some dark side in me, like given to the history in my like life when I was growing up. So there's a lot of sadness. So when I, when you say that you write sad songs and you can resonate with those, I do the same thing. And I'm craving this heavy music, like sounds and stuff. And that's why I came to hear your band because like there's part of me wh which is still like, 
sad. I want this sadness has a voice, you know? So when I came to your show and you were like, wow, wow, it was so cool. I was like, oh yes, let all of this sadness to come out. And I used to play in a band with my dad. And um, actually he played in laser beam for a little while. Oh wow, what, he, what instrument do your dad plays? He's a bass player. Ooh. So he plays bass and, you know, it's really cool playing with him because he's like, it's like playing with a clone of yourself musically, you know? So I just feel like it was just insanely easy to, I wouldn't even have to talk to him ever. It was just, you know, just, he would just know and I would know. You make me so proud of you. Uh, you are like following his steps. You are not playing bass guitar when you're playing guitar, and <laughs> it's still guitar. <laughs> it might feel so empowering to have your father be there supporting your music career. My mom actually was a musician when she was younger, and she was like, not really. She would not be supportive of me doing music, and uh, my father would be also like my father is very like misogynistic man so he would like say like ah oh, all musicians are like drug addicts or like <laughs> he's sluts not, he's, <laughs> he's not wrong I mean, look at me <laughs> oh, you're a great guy and i'm a great guy <laughs> yeah look at us <laughs> look at us um so it's i wish i wish i would be performing and my parents would come and say like they're proud of me but I don't think that's happening in Tennyson, so I kind of nicely envy that your dad is there for you. Well, kind of, you know, kind of. What does it mean, kind of? Tell <laughs> me. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> Let's trauma bond. <laughs> <laughs> nah, my dad, my dad's, he's got a good heart, but, you know, he's just like a loose cannon, so... But he's really easy to play with, which is cool. <laughs> Female fronted rock bands, yay or nay? Hell yeah! <laughs> yes. Uh, what what type of like a female vocal you like prefer if you're listening to female fronted rock bands? When I was a kid, my my mom and my dad they're like kind of so biased, you know. Like they would be like, oh, you know, like this would sound better if it was a dude singing this or this or this. Oh no! You know? Yeah, they would like that. And and then in junior high school. I discovered the Distillers in Brody Dow. So I actually heard this this band through Tony Hawk Pro Skater. It's like a video game. She has the most like insane raspy voice, and it's Ooh. like the Ramones. But she's got like a super raspy voice, and she's super hot, and it, like instant crush. Like you know, like <laughs> <laughs> she like rocked my world and like just changed me from that point. One second, let me get my mama jug. This is. <laughs> that would be bigger. I would get bigger. <laughs> Water break. Mm -hmm. All right. What's your favorite thing in the city? That's a tough one because it's shifting around. Okay, I'm just going to have to say it's bottom of the hill for a few reasons. Um, I've always wanted to go there since I was little. And all of my favorite bands have played there. And even local bands that are my favorite bands have played there. And I honestly, I never thought that I would get the chance to play that place. Like, I was like, we're never going to be able to play this place. You know, how am I ever going to be able to play this place when... Well, look at you now. You're performing on the best venues of the CD. Oh, yeah. Well, you're rocking, guys. You're doing great. Everybody I like, I will talk to, everybody knows your band. And again, Laser Dream, such a good name. Everybody freaking remembers it. And I'm so in love with Bottom of the Hill, too. When I went there for the first time, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm trying to remember who was the first band I saw in Bottom of the Hill. I think might be Tess and the Details. They were amazing. I, I also like their image. It's so like well-defined. Yeah, it's like pop punk. Pop punk, Marilyn Monroe. Like, how can you forget this? You notice know, everything's color coordinated too. Like, you, you're so tense in the detail that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> yellow and black. Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned that you like some retro stuff. Oh yeah, so I I love to collect uh, old gear from the Soviet Union. Um, tonight I'll be playing a Poltava Fuzz Wah. <laughs> uh, I actually think it's more of like a fuzz phaser. You know, they always, they always have really cool microphones as well. Like I, I got this, it's called a Grundig microphone. It's, it's a, supposedly like a copy of a Sennheiser mic. I don't know the model <laughs> names, you know. They're just square, they're tiny, but it's two like stuck together and they rotate 
Oh, like, wow. No, so I haven't seen that. Yeah, you can put them above like a drum set and have just like overheads and point them crisscross. Or oh, that's cool. Great for some bongos, oh. you know. <laughs> uh, what I've been doing right now is like for new music, like I just love getting crazy and experimental. So I, ha I set my amps up like a sandwich. So it's like here's one amp and the speaker's facing this way. And then I have another amp on the other side and speaker facing this way. So they're both pointed at each other. Oh, and then, wow. I, then I put both of these mics, one in each, and then they're both getting kind of the crossfire. Oh my God. And so you're really doing cool lots setting. of experiments. Yeah. You're like a real true guitar player. Like you're a vocalist, of course, but also you're a guitar player. And you are like, you know, all of those cool little, little things. <laughs> I just love the creative process of stuff like that. And all this stuff, um, especially Soviet stuff, I feel like they failed to copy things accurately which in turn made them really unique and awesome sounding that has like fuzz some oh, kind of like yes. a noise situation gnarly happening. gnarly <laughs> fuzz like it's so bad like <laughs> the, um, you haven't driven Jiguli like a <laughs> russian car you haven't it's like soviet car oh my god i fucking hate that like car. the yugo <laughs> Jiguli lada you know have you no. heard of lada? oh my god and, and you know what Good that you didn't. haven't heard about that. <laughs> Poltava pedal, it's it's got fuzz. And it's like a sweep filter. Yeah. And then if you press down on it, there's like a secret button. Oh, you know, a it, secret button. Yeah, and it <laughs> makes it sound like a roto vibe. I don't know if mine's just broken, but if you hit it very like kind of lightly, there's a middle zone <laughs> where it won't quite go into the, the wah, 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 and it'll just go to this perfect like <laughs> this perfect half half cox like a uh, wah sound where it's just like super like randy rhodes guitar like tone you know like <laughs> ozzy it's just like so perfect how do you guys write your songs i noodle around on the guitar until i think something sounds cool usually i'll just let it sit in my voice memos or whatever I'll, you know i'll come up with like a, a melody and start singing it and just like you know, be like, Fruit Ninja <laughs> is my favorite appliance, you know? And I'll come up with a melody and then I'll put it on my voice mm -hmm. memo thing. I'll just let them sit. So I just stockpile, I have like a bank and then, and sometimes if I'm bored at work, I have really long breaks. Sometimes I'll go through and I'll be like, hmm, like, you know, I'll try and piece them together, like yeah. puzzle pieces. It's like you're creating puzzle pieces, you know, from your mind. And then while I'm driving, like I, I drive buses for a living, so it's like... Oh, actually, I forgot to ask you, what do you do? Yeah, I'm a bus driver. Oh, so, that's so yeah. cool. Are you driving like particular number of the bus, public transportation bus? So, or yeah, like, what, what, what do you drive? Not anymore. So I used to drive public transit. Now <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a private gig, which is really cool, you know? Like I just pick up a bunch of tech nerds and uh, drive them take them around. to work. And... <laughs> I normally, when I write song, I go with a producer and lyricist because English is not my first language. And, and lyrics are the hardest part. It like, is. It is. It so is. hard. I, I should say I was never like uh, very good at lyrics, although when I was a little kid I would write poems and stuff. But I prefer to delegate this to someone who is actually as good at it because final product is very important to me. But I have lots of good thoughts. Like uh, I actually use two apps on my phone regularly. It's voice memos. So I'm like, I'm walking sometimes like, nah, 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 and I'm looking around that yeah. nobody's like <laughs> seeing do me too. do that I'll stupid like thing. I'll be like hidden in an alley, you know, like behind a trash can. Like, <laughs> I believe I can fly. <laughs> And another app I use is Notes. I just write lots of ideas. There's like so many topics I would like to express and give a voice to social problems. I was uh, experiencing myself. So I would like write a lot of like little ideas. And then when we get together, I would just like pull out those my voice memos and my like written ideas and then we would start shaping the song over it sometimes i'm so proud i have like a new three new songs coming and one of those songs has the most lyrics i ever written normally it's like oh can we do like something like this and i would say in the sentence and then the lyricist would help me to put in rhymes and everything i try to sing along and see if it suits my soul you mm -hmm. know like if there's a word who doesn't really resonate with me, I like come up with another word which also rhymes with that one. I am so proud that in that particular song, I actually wrote lots of lines myself and I was like, look at me, I improved my English so well, now I can put those lyrics there. Like we sit down and within four hours we write the whole thing. Wow. And uh, we already have like 
demo, Halloween is coming. What's your Halloween costume? So there's a really awesome music video for this band called Red Fang, it's called Prehistoric Dog. And in this video, they always have the best videos, by the way, uh, something I aspire to. So yeah, well, I think I'm gonna rip them off this year for Halloween. Um, do you know what LARPing is? Like, do you know what Dungeons and Dragons is? Yes. Okay, so. <laughs> that I know. <laughs> so LARPing is people, like nerdy people, who go to the park and they sword fight and they cast oh, spells. Oh, okay, got it. I, I, so, I am familiar with that, but I, I didn't know the name. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> but in, in this Red Fang video, you know, they roll up in the car and they're watching these dudes. And they're, like, they're like dorks, you know? <laughs> the whole music video is they want to fight them, you know? But they build, they build this armor out of like beer, like beer boxes and beer cans and stuff. And they have like awesome armor. Like it'll say like Tecate or like natural light, you know? Or, we're doing a Halloween show. So I think we're going to be like the, I, I want to be like the beer warriors. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, come on on stage with like a, the swords <laughs> the and like the big armor. <laughs> yeah, it would be awesome. I, I told Ariel, I was like, this year we should be uh, Lilu and Corbin Dallas. From Fifth, Fifth Element. Yeah, yeah, I was like, this is like, how do you say you're a millennial without saying you're a millennial? <laughs> just like, I was like, I'm going to be Lily Dallas with a little red hair yeah. wig. And uh, we're going to have a little multipass, which is going to be our baby. Our baby is <laughs> just going to be a multipass. That's a good idea. <laughs> I grew up in Europe, right? In Eastern Europe. So I never experienced trick or treating. And now I finally have a little baby and I can go and trick or treat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's wrap up and talk about our plans for 2025. I think uh, my goal is to take more time to myself. Like I, I worked a lot this year and then it was a lot of being at concerts this year and hanging out with people this year, which was awesome. But um, like sometimes you just like need a little you time too. You know, the time really flew by. I thought like a year and a half went by really, really fast because I think about it and I'm like, I feel like I just got here, you know? But, <laughs> But, and then I look back and it's like, well, I, ha I haven't released anything professionally in two years. And I'm like, wow, okay, that's like a big, a big number. So it's like, my goal is to um, just start creating these tracks again, like professionally. So I would love you to sing us one of your songs. I'm going to sing a brand new song. It's called Life Could Be So Cruel. You're going to be the first one who's going to hear that. <laughs> Till you 
guys for watching follow laser beam uh, and social media I'll leave all of those links underneath the video and it was so nice having, having you today bye <laughs>